Good afternoon. My name is Christine Barnicote. I'm Secretariat Officer for the Energy Networks Australia. Unfortunately, Dennis Van Puvelt, our Director of Gas, is unable to be with us today, so he has asked me to introduce this webinar and today's presenters. Well, uh, welcome to the public comment web webinar for standard ASNZ4645 gas dis distribution networks. This standard has been extensively reviewed over the last two years and is currently open for public comment. There are three parts to the standard. Today we will provide information about the changes to part three. Parts one and two were covered in webinars earlier this week. All the webinars are recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel next week. Participants in the webinars will be emailed details of how to access the recordings as soon as they've been loaded. Our presenters today are Dean Solmanson and Cornelius Groot. Uh, Dean is uh, Service Manager Technical Services at Atco Gas in Western Australia. He is a professional engineer who has worked in the gas industry for about 21 years. And his current role, he is responsible for materials and equipment specifications, testing and approvals, safety working instructions, training and gas distribution inspection for all fields of work activities. Dean is a member of the AG 8008 committee for the revision of this standard, ASNZS4645, and two other gas industry related standards. He is the current chairperson for the Energy Network's Gas Technical Reference Group, comprising of senior engineering representatives from all major gas distribution operators with a focus on technical information and innovation. I beg your pardon. Our second presenter today is Cornelius de Groot. He is a chartered professional engineer with 21 of his 36 year career working in the gas industry, including time with the State Energy Commission of Western Australia and the last 12 years for Energy Safe WA. He believes that a good standard makes regulation effective and regulation relies heavily on the quality of the relevant standard. I will now hand over to Dean, who will take you through the proposed changes of part three of ASNZ4645. Thank you. Over to you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Dean Solmanson. Sorry. Yeah, thank you, thank you to Christine, and welcome to everyone to this uh, webinar for part three of the standard. There has been a lot of work put into this revision by all members of the committee, and we sincerely hope that everyone working in the gas distribution industry in Australia and New Zealand will benefit from the proposed changes. Before we start, I will briefly review the agenda for today. I will go through a few administrative issues, restate the scope and application of this standard, provide a brief background to the revision, list major identified issues, and review the proposed improvements to part three by going through each section and noting major changes you should all be aware of. There are multiple stages to every standard review, and I will very briefly step through these now. Uh, there is the project approval stage. The proposal is evaluated by the stakeholders and Standards Australia, and the project's approved. Uh, the project setup stage, where the scope is finalized, the schedule agreed, and the project kickoff held. The draft is written and submitted to Standards Australia for editing. There's a nine-week public comment period. Uh, public comments are received and reviewed by the committee, and the draft updated and submitted for editing. There's a two-week balloting period, and the resolution of any concerns in the final draft to Standards Australia for styling. And, uh, Finally, the publication, the final edits completed, uh, the standards approved for the publication, and uh, the approvals are given, and the standard is published. Uh, a couple of administrative points before we start. Um, Australian standard, uh, Australian New Zealand standard 4645, 
part one, part two, and part three are all out for public comment at this time. Uh, the main purpose of these webinars is to make public and to make uh, all people in the industry aware that these uh, standards are up for public comment. And we, uh, we on the committee uh, really encourage everyone out there to uh, participate in the process if you're in the industry and provide us with, uh, with your comments back through the standards page. Um, so uh, Energy Networks has presented the three webinars this week. This is the last one. The public comments period closes on the 26th of April, end of this month, 2017. Uh, drafts of the standard uh, and the process for public comments can be found on the uh, standards page and the, the web, um, web address is given there. And if you just look on the bottom right-hand corner of the page, you've got to follow that link, uh, which will tell you um, what to do next. Uh, the scope uh, sorry, the scope of this. Uh, this standard specifies the requirements for safe, reliable, and affordable management of gas distribution networks operating at less than or equal to 1050 kPa that reticulate gas to consumers. The requirements apply to the life cycle of new gas distribution networks or new assets introduced where existing gas distribution networks are modified or augmented. The sections the sections on operations, maintenance, repair, decommissioning, gas quality, and risk assessment may be suitable for application to existing assets in existing gas distribution networks. Gas distribution networks within the scope of this standard comprise all facilities between the outlets of all city gates, supply points, or their equivalent, or for an LPG gas um, distribution network, the point of exit of the LP gas feeder plant and the outlet of the consumer's meter assemblies. There are exclusions. This standard does not apply to the following, piping from the outlet of the consumer meter assembly or equivalent point of supply and any other piping in accordance with ASNZS 5601. Gas distribution networks that utilize steel pipe with a hoop stress of more than 20% of the specified minimum yield strength, the SMYS. Uh, piping associated with distribution and reticulation of LPG gas in the liquid phase. Transport of gas, including hydrogen, either alone or any mixture of hydrogen in excess of 15% by volume. Uh, piping associated with gas manufacturing plants, petroleum processing plants, industrial plants or mines, um, pressure vessels, or pipe work from on-site LPG storage, either in cylinders or tanks, which, solely, which is solely on a single private land holding. However, some jurisdictions of the standard may be adopted for those circumstances. The stakeholders most affected by the standard update are owners and operators of gas distribution networks, technical authorities that regulate the gas distribution networks, designers, engineering houses, hydraulic consultants, architects, etc., who are responsible for engineering design of elements of the gas distribution networks. Contractors, including individual plumbers through, through to larger organizations, who construct and maintain elements of gas distribution systems, and equipment and material suppliers. Reflecting on this list of stakeholders, those represented on the committee include 18 listed government and industry reference groups, committees, and associations across Australia and New Zealand. <clears throat> the Australia, the Australian New Zealand Standard 4645 suite of standards deliver the foundations for design, construction, maintenance, and operations of natural gas and LP gas distribution networks. The key objective of this suite of standards is to ensure safe, reliable, and affordable operation of gas distribution networks that reticulate gas from the city gate stations or their equivalents to customers. These standards adopt a performance-based approach for gas distribution network management, whereby an acceptable level of risk is to be met through the appropriate application of controls during the life cycle of the gas distribution network. This performance-based approach allows innovation and development in the way gas distribution networks are managed, operated, and maintained by specifying safety outcomes while allowing some flexibility on how these outcomes are delivered. Supporting this performance-based approach are methods known as means of conformance which can be used by a practitioner to achieve an acceptable level of risk where the practitioner wants to minimize the effort required to undergo the more complex process offered through the performance-based approach. 
These means of conformance are industry-recognized approaches to the control of threats. The ASNZS suite of standards 4645 is comprised of three parts for network management, steel pipe systems, and plastic pipe systems. The revisions are based upon industry experience and research since the last release of this standard in 2008. To this end, it is appropriate to reflect the work undertaken by the Western Australian Technical Regulator, uh, Cornelius uh, de Groot, who's presenting with me today. In raising the initial project uh, to review the standard in 2015, and for their continued support in bringing along with ACCO Gas and other network operators some of their hard-won experiences to the table. There are six foundation elements. A gas distribution network is designed and constructed to have sufficient controls to withstand the threats to which it may be subjected during its life cycle. Before a gas distribution network is placed into operation, it is inspected and tested to prove its integrity. Important matters relating to safety, engineering, design, materials, testing, and inspection are reviewed, documented, recorded, and approved in accordance with the safety and operating plan. Operation and maintenance provide for continued monitoring and safe operation of a gas distribution network. Where changes occur in or to a gas distribution network which alter design assumptions or affect original integrity, appropriate steps are taken to assess changes to ensure continued safe, reliable, affordable operation of the gas distribution network. Where means of conformance alternative to that provided in the standard are adopted, a review is undertaken to determine the that the alternative is within an acceptable level of risk. <clears throat> the review of the standard has been based upon 10 principles that were agreed to at the first meeting of the committee. Where there has been debate, these principles, along with the overall objective, have provided guidance to the decisions that have had to be made. The principles are, the standard continues to define important principles to be followed through the life cycle of gas distribution network. This, the standard continues to provide performance-based or risk-based requirements. Sorry, I'll start that again. The standard continues to allow for alternative means of compliance provided acceptable risk outcomes can be demonstrated. The standard ensures that its scope limits should be clear in relation to related standards, such as the pipeline standards and the consumer piping standards to avoid overlaps or gaps. The standard is self-contained to the highest level practical to, be, to ensure any future inconsistency, including minimization of external referencing. The standard promotes efficiency to target reduced costs and ensure no undue imposition of any new requirements that leads to inefficient or imprudent costs. The standard is to be based on accepted engineering principles, including the robust review and analysis of information to ensure sound technical outcomes that seek to eliminate opinion in, in place of fact. The standard promotes harmonization across the industry, including the areas of definition of acceptable risk, definition of demonstration of ALARP nomenclature. The standard embodies lessons learned since 2008, especially in definition processes and implementation of key elements such as FSAs, SAOPs, etc. The, slide, the slides and the bullet points I'm going to present are generally in the same order as they appear in the draft to help you follow if you want. In some of the slides, I've highlighted in blue text the key items. Generally, these are the items that the committee would also, would also like to draw your attention to and where you may wish to concentrate your comments. Plastic pipes, and especially polyethylene, is by far the material of choice for new construction and replacement of reticulated gas distribution networks around the world. Other plastic materials, including nylon, are very popular in some jurisdictions. While PVC is a legacy material that is no longer preferred or recommended for new construction. I will now hand over to Cornelius de Groot to provide insight into several major concerns with the current revision of the standard. 
Hi, it's uh, Cornelius here. Um, AS NZS 4645 was originally brought forward for review due to several identified issues with inadequate information concerning gas leak survey and safe gas purging methods, consideration for gas main, main breaks or other faults, resulting in uncontrolled gas escapes and high energy release rates impacting nearby persons and property. A couple of changes are general in nature and reflected in updates throughout all three parts of the standards. The term means of compliance has been changed to means of conformance in order to better reflect the way in which listed requirements are met within the standard. There's always room for general wording cleanup and clarifications between revisions of standards and the committee hopes that most changes are self-explanatory. We have tried to follow a, a couple of common formatting rules in this presentation with blue colored lettering identifying large areas of change and a focus area for your review and public comments drawing attention to these matters while a plus sign prefix indicates new topics have been added. Back to Dean. Us. Again, uh, just repeating slides and bullet points are generally in the same order as they appear as in the draft to help you follow if you want. This part three uh, content slide indicates uh, topics in black with some changes, uh, blue indicating major changes, and gray minor or no changes. So uh, we're going to, I'm going to step through these now um, with a bit of handoff to Cornelius on the different topics. Uh, go through the scope in general, um, materials, design, jointing, construction, uh, pressure testing, uh, commissioning and maintenance. Major changes to the scope of part three include recognition that PVC's time as a material of choice for new gas networks has now passed out of favor with all Australian and New Zealand gas network operators. It continues to be acceptable for ongoing repair maintenance and operations within existing networks, but should not be used for new construction. More modern materials like PE100 and nylon are superior and are the basis of gas distribution network construction going forward. Significantly, the maximum allowable operating pressure for plastic net gas networks has been increased from the previous 700 kPa to 1050 kPa in this revision to reflect the common MAOP scope across all parts of ASNZS 4645. Similarly, the pipe size limitations stated in the scope have been removed from the previous version. It is important to note that several new clarifications have been added into the design section for pipe size versus pressure versus location. Lastly, the scope has been amended to remove exclusions and recognize the very real future uses of our gas distribution networks to reticulate biogas from landfill and waste treatment, along with hydrogen from various renewable resources, renewable sources. Okay, back to me again. Um, in the uh, materials area, reclaim materials and components section was relocated to part one, as it was relevant for general materials, not just those used on plastic distribution, obviously also for steel. Materials tables 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3 have been expanded and updated significantly. The old version listed only standards for metal valves and flanges, while the new version reflects several, several appropriate and current international standards for common materials like PE gas valves that all gas distribution, distribution operators have been using for years. A lot of discussion took place within the committee concerning approvals of proprietary materials, with an emphasis on providing guidance for a material management process. More inf information, including a materials management process flowchart, can be found in part one of this revised uh, st uh, standard. Um, back to me. Uh, some, uh, this is Dean again, some housekeeping updates were added to the design section, including a more extensive bend radius versus SDR data table for PE pipe. Um, on review, uh, the depth of cover information was better aligned with design, and so it was moved to this section from construction, from, from its previous home in construction. 
The old version of the standard previously identified risk from large gas escapes by stating uh, a one gigajoule per second gas release rate limit. A huge amount of debate took place around the, this issue focused on how to update the design section of the standard and improve safety. Committee agreement was reached for allowable maximum pipe sizes and pressure combinations near high density community use areas and with regard to required separation distances from buildings. The standard reflects what is essentially current design practice and limits the future possible risks, risk issues that may occur without these limits. The outcome is not completely dissimilar to the current requirements in the United Kingdom as set out in TD3 and has been set out in a sim simple to read tabular form. Also, installation of marker signs was not well covered in the previous version but now has a dedicated application table which requires their installation for larger diameter and higher pressure plastic gas mains. Back to uh, myself, Cornelius. Um, for PED pipe jointing, it was recognized that automatic, automatic machine welding was mandatory for high, higher consequence of fusion welds rather than the 700 kPa or DN225 millimeter limitations. The PE bus weld bead size data uh, was in a table form has been moved to Appendix H and only applies to the older style of PE bus welding using a single action low pressure welding machine. Rotary surface speeding tools are recognized by all operators to give superior PE pipe surface preparation and are now mandatory. Manual straight scrapers are only to be used where a lack of access or other restrictions exist. Some common manufacturers' electrofusion fittings are specifically designed to be reheated under some circumstances, such as after failed weld due to generator or weld of fault mid-cycle of the weld. Therefore, the previous prohibition for reheating has been removed. However, operators must be actually aware of the specific manufacturer's fitting limitations. It was recognized that significant improvements could be made to minimize EF weld failures from poor operators. A regime of mandatory periodic destructive EF weld testing has been added to jointing requirements and will doubtless impact all PE welding personnel when it comes into effect. Mechanical joints sections have been removed from part three. Previous descriptions were too generic. Mechanical joints should always have be avoided as a known common source of leaks due to stress relaxations of plastics, pipes and rubber seals. Fittings are invariably proprietary and do not conform to known pipe and fitting standards. However, the intent of this standard is that required fittings in this category can still be approved by technical assessments, testing and through the FSA process. Back to Dean. Uh, just a brief update on uh, Section 5, construction. Um, it's been realigned, uh, sorry, Section, sorry, Part 3 of the standard has been aligned with Part 1 requirements and the structure that's also given in Part 2. Uh, similarly, clauses have been moved out, uh, clauses have been moved out to Section 3 design and uh, positioning is now uh, been readdressed as burial. Um, Cleaning internally has been moved to uh, occur after backfilling. There was just some editing, um, editing and cleaning up of words and sections and a flow of work. Uh, again, in section five under construction, um, some reports were brought forward uh, that indicated uh, to the committee that indicated that the 24-month uh, unprotected ultraviolet exposure allowance in the previous version of the standard was too long and this has now been reduced to 12 months. Some debate still continues around how to account uh, for the location and therefore the intensity and duration of UV exposure. However, it was agreed that 12 months was a safe limit and longer exposure than that should be approved by a PE pipe manufacturer or material inspection service with appropriate expertise and equipment to validate the PE pipe fitness for use. UV surface oxidation damage depth increases as a factor of exposure time and conditions which will then require a greater depth of surface peeling prior to use until the minimum um, outer 
outer diameter limit is reached. Uh, so we're not prohibiting uh, the use of uh, PE older than 12 months. It's just that it has to be inspected. That's pretty, pretty obvious. Uh, lastly, in construction uh, section 5, um, tre uh, the words trenchless installation replaces directional drilling. And again, we're just aligning uh, all the, that, the terminology across all parts of the standard. Uh, this now, this trenchless installation section now includes requirements uh, for a written procedure. That's probably another significant thing. Um, and the improved trenchless technology descriptions, including, which now includes directional drilling, pneumatic thrusting, pipe bursting, microtunneling, auger boring, and mole plowing. Uh, I'll hand back to Cornelius. Yeah, um, pressure testing was reviewed and it was agreed to reflect standard field practice by network operators and extend the allowance for testing with gas at operating pressures to 50 meters. Um, pneumatic testing up to 720 kPa for PE pipes up to 180 mil diameter or 10 kilonewtons was deemed safe to continue. As with many other technical requirements of the standard, specifying materials or conditions outside these limits is possible subject to the formal safety assessment process. Part 2 and Part 3 commissioning methods have been aligned. Section 7 commissioning has been a general cleanup to make previous requirements clearer like pressure, pressure, pressuring of mains not immediately commissioned with air. The planning and purging sections have the additional requirements of determining a method of measuring gas concentrations and locating purges to prevent trapping of air. Back to Dean. Uh, in section 8, maintenance, uh, the wording in part 2, the part 2 and 3 wording and the format have been aligned. And additional wording has been added uh, for the use of uh, squeeze off repair clamps. Um, many of the operators, including uh, ACO Gas here in Western Australia, and uh, and with our network operator, with uh, or sorry, with our safety regulator, with uh, Cornelius, uh, we've actually undergone uh, some testing, which is still taking place to do with uh, squeeze off repair clamps. But uh, highly recommended, and we've added words into the standard for that effect. Um, I'm just going to now uh, just step through, uh, I guess, highlights for the contents, uh, um, sorry, for the appendices um, in uh, part three. Uh, appendix A, um, sorry, Appendix A reference documents. Um, we've added many references for materials. It's a main change. If you look through it now, there's a lot of references for materials that all of us are using that weren't previously included. Um, Appendix B, the design factors, no change. Uh, Appendix C, uh, typical jointing equipment of PE, no change. Uh, Appendix E, uh, pressure test methods, was previously known as Appendix D, uh, application of various types of test equipment. So it's just been a bit of a re reordering there. Um, uh, there's uh, Appendix H, uh, the acceptable bead sign. Uh, there's uh, Appendix H, uh, the acceptable bead sizes for butt fusion, um, that really is a new appendix, but it's just a table that was previously in the body of the text. So just, just a bit of reordering. Uh, over to Cornelius. A new normative appendix guideline for pressure testing safety has been added. It calls for pressure release on test equipment. It identifies appropriate valve positions and host, test host requirements. It identifies that burial of Burial of the pipe ends or blast nets are required for pneumatic pressure testing at pressures greater than 300 kPa. And lastly, provides clearer values for pneumatic testing exclusion zone requirements based on actual pipe failure test results. After review of several known fatal incidents from loose end caps which have occurred during pressure testing of pipes in other than uh, gas distribution industries, Concern was raised about this potential danger to workers and the public and if the limits of the standards were actually safe. Extensive testing was undertaken by ETCO Gas and Energy Safety WA to prove the current limits were safe indeed. The images show tests with, end caps, some, with the end caps suddenly break away 
uh, releasing uh, air under 750 millimeters of depth of sand cover, which produces a debris radius of approximately 4 to 5 meters. So I guess, uh, sorry, Dean adding in here, um, just regarding the testing, um, just really reiterating that uh, uh, the operators, um, most of the net gas network operators on the committee um, are you know, concerned about what's written into the standard. And in some cases, in this particular standard, uh, we took it upon ourselves uh, to actually test what was in the standard uh, due to lack of uh, information uh, you know, in the international community. Um, so we actually re recreated the tests and uh, testing to make sure things were safe. Appendix F, direct purging methods. It remains informative as it provides improved guidance on direct purging and avoidance of static electricity. Um, amendments are based on work performed by the WA regulator and the entire calculation and worksheets can be downloaded from the GTRC uh, website under publications. Addresses risk of static buildup of ignition during the purging operation, and of, obviously that is predominantly for plastic pipes. Limits the discharge velocity to 20 meters per second for that reason. And that can be done by various means, but in the set of calculations and the worksheets and the report, you'll find that has been set out in those calculations and reports to be achieved by putting an upstream pressure of 7 kPa uh, of the orifice plates and have different orifice sizes for different pipes. Um, separate clauses for stage and gradual approaches and a new branch purging method has been included. Back to Dean. Uh, just a quick update on Appendix G, specialized tooling. Um, it's a very small appendix and uh, it might grow in future versions, but it's a start. It's a new informative appendix which identifies uh, reference standards for specialized tooling for the gas industry. Uh, the idea was to, to standardize, uh, if possible, um, to, to ensure that uh, the tools we use on our networks um, are all built and created to, to uh, known standards. Uh, I'm showing you the, uh, the part three uh, table again, uh, contents, as a reminder of the areas of major change and uh, which we expect should be the focus of the public comment. So if you just want to, um, obviously, uh, if you look in the front of the standard, you'll be able to see, see, the, uh, see this table of contents uh, after this presentation and just use that as a reminder that uh, those are the sections that have changed in, in black, uh, gray, not much change, and blue, uh, there's been uh, substantial changes. And again, uh, this is just the list of appendices affected, uh, probably for your, uh, you know, again, for concentrating uh, your review comments, uh, Appendix A, uh, D, F, and G, um, and uh, with D and F probably being the main ones that would be of most interest to everyone. Uh, just going through very briefly again uh, the administrative points, uh, the, the uh, standards, all three, sorry, all three parts of Australian standard, uh, Australian New Zealand standard 4645 gas distribution networks uh, are out for public comment until the 26th of April. We strongly encourage everyone listening to this webinar or uh, make your colleagues aware in the industry to pass comments back to the committee. For incorporation, if you don't agree with something that is in the draft version or you want to add uh, things, um, uh, that would be really great and the committee would be glad to receive any comments back. Can I just say something? Yeah, uh, sorry, Cornelius, yeah. I just yeah. wanted to add a few points. Um, I just want to say something uh, in addition to all of this. For those people who on this webinar who have been in the committee are well aware of it, but for those people who are not in the committee, um, very early on, in the committee, and this is going back to April 2015, the decision was made that any major change in the standard would have to be supported by a peer-reviewed discussion paper. Correct. And uh, I think that's important to note here is that these major changes, other than editorial, um, have been yeah, mulled over quite a bit uh, during the committee work and again the advantage of the discussion paper was is to get the engineering facts on the table. 
and I should sorry, I should add that it's uh, not just for part three issues; it's also for part one and part two issues. Um, that concludes uh, the slides of the changes that um, are of most impact to uh, to part three, the standard for plastic pipe systems. Um, at this time, I'd like to take uh, any questions uh, that anyone might have. And please keep in mind um, if you, uh, uh, that you can direct questions to me now or, or any of the members of the committee or um, uh, you know, the senior uh, members of your organizations to direct to the committee. Uh, and we will take questions offline as well. So I'll, I'll just give some time uh, for people to uh, send in any questions on the chat line. There's, uh, there's no questions coming through, um, but uh, I'm certainly expecting a few after the seminar. Um, based on no questions, I will uh, conclude at this time. I would like to uh, thank, thank, uh, give my thanks to the ENA for making this series of webinars available. Uh, I'd like to thank the AG8 uh, committee members for all their great work and a, and a little more to go to finish the standard off. And also to my colleague uh, Cornelius de Groot uh, presenting here with me today and helping to keep things running smoothly. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for logging into the webinar. And if I can really encourage all those listening to read the draft as thoroughly as possible and provide us with any feedback, uh, if possible, through the Standards Australia website. Um, I'm just going to now hand back to uh, Christine uh, from the ENA. Thank you very much, Dean and Cornelius. <clears throat> I would um, also like to thank the presenters from the other webinars this week, Phil Colvin and Anthony uh, Bonacci, um, for their uh, contributions to part one and part two earlier. Uh, as I previously mentioned, the recordings of all three webinars will be available on our YouTube channel, um, and details of this will be emailed to you uh, next week uh, with all the uh, correct links. Um, and on behalf of Energy Networks Australia, I thank uh, everyone for participating in this series of webinars. Thank you.